I'd started using the robot fairly early for a few selected cases. I did like 30 or 40 in the first couple of years, and I did 315 in 2022. I was moderately busy robotic surgeon in my first job. The issue was always access to robots. And then as I've taken on my position here, I actually have gotten very busy. And I just did last week my 100th thoracic robotic case. Before when we did laparoscopic hernia repairs, there was really a limit to the kind of the stuff you could can do and how big a hernia you could do and stuff just by the mechanics of laparoscopy that have changed with the robot. It really allows for a different surgery to be done. Certain cases I think are much easier or can be done more facile with the robot. Those things include like mediastinal masses. It's tumors sitting on top of the heart. And so you're kind of operating upside down, but the robot makes it so that you can really, you have these wristed instruments. So you can really do that much easier. To me, if it's a benefit to the patient is the, the biggest thing. You know, if I can keep people in the hospital for less amount of time or they have a quicker recovery or they require less pain medication, then that's the way to do it. This next generation of surgeons that are coming out are much more competent on the robot. Most general surgery residents are getting exposure to robotics and training and even getting their robotics certification as trainees. I think there's going to continue to be this kind of meteoric rise in the number of robotic cases that are being done. And I think our trainees are going to continue to become more facile and, and dependent on it. I think a lot of people, the biggest issue is access to the robots. I think a lot of us would do even more robotic surgery if we had a robot available every day of the week.